Lighting can make or break the atmosphere of your game, but achieving realistic lighting and performance-friendly lighting has always been a bit of a challenge until now. Enter Adaptive Probe Volumes, Unity's next-gen tool for lighting your dynamic objects. It offers precision, it offers efficiency, plus the big bonus of no more manual pro placement or resource-heavy global illumination. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down how you can get started using them to transform your game's lighting. So how do adaptive probe volumes work? Well, you can break down two main components. You have the light probes and then the probe volume. The light probes act as points in the scene that capture indirect lighting, such as ambient light or light bouncing off of walls, and it will then store that information and be able to apply it to dynamic objects that are moving throughout the scene when you're playing the game. The next component is the probe volume. This is going to be the 3D space where the light probes are going to be placed. And with adaptive probe volumes, this system actually dynamically adjusts the density of the light probes within the volume based on a few things. Those things being things like light complexity, so where there's significant lighting contrast or maybe shadows and other things like scene geometry. Now for this project, I'm actually going to be using the universal 3D sample that Unity provides. You can just find it. If you go and create a new project, you just go under sample and you'll find it right there. You just download it, create project, and you can follow along if you like. But you can also just implement this in your own project. Now, if you're wondering why I want to use this template, it's simply because it already has a few scenes for us to play around with. You have this terminal scene, has plenty of lights. Personally, myself, I I love this garden scene, so I'm gonna go ahead and hop over to it. I really love this scene because we have so many lights, differences going in between lighted interior, going out to an exterior that's a little darker. What this doesn't have is adaptive probe volumes. Instead, what it uses is the old light probe system. But the problem with the old light probe system is you can see here, these are all the different light probes that they've had, and they've actually had to make these groups here and place all these light probes themselves. So you're getting a lot of good definition because you're defining exactly where they are, but you can also see this is a lot of work. So the adaptive probe volumes looks to encompass all of this, but also speed up development time for you by placing all of it itself. And the coolest thing of all is it's only a few clicks and you will be working with adaptive probe volumes in no time. A few other things I want to point out if you are newer to using light in your games or just want a quick refresher, you'll notice that that this scene has a ton of lights. And what we're looking to do is capture both baked lights so static lights or mixed lights, which will provide indirect baking or light that's indirect that will be baked into our light probes. Now, it's not enough just to show you how adaptive probe volumes work. I've actually set up a little test here. So I have these moving cubes that will move throughout the scene and they will move from this indoor lighting to this outdoor lighting. And we can test out what the old light probe groups do and how that affects performance. And then I'm also going to test and bake it without the light probe groups. And then finally, we're gonna do one more final bake after I show you how to use adaptive probe volumes and see what the improvements look like there. So with the scene moving, you can see we got pretty stable frames per second. We get a max around 110. Uh, we have an average hitting about 90, maybe 100. And as we fly throughout the scene, this doesn't change too much. Sometimes we have some improvements, but overall, what I really want to point out is just how stable everything is. And this is all using the old light probe system. Now, as an extra step for myself, you can follow along if you want, but you don't have to do this. I am going to turn off this light probe group. Now, before I rebake this without any light probes, I want to make sure that I clear the bake data just so it doesn't store any light probes whatsoever. And I'm going to hit generate light. Now, you'll notice as the scene is cycling that our cubes have lost a lot of that dynamic indirect lighting it used to have. It's not as smooth. You'll notice it just kind of turns a shade of gray or black when it's moving in and out of light. So that is what the light probes have been doing for us. It has been storing all of that baked indirect lighting. So now we've lost that and we've also lost some performance as well. You can notice the frames are a little more sporadic and the GPU frames are taking about five milliseconds. So let's get adaptive probe volumes into this scene. So if you're following along in this scene specifically, then just make sure you turn off this light probe groups. That's the old light probe system in place. So we want to turn that off. And then we need to change this to use the new adaptive probe volumes. And we do that by changing the render pipeline asset that's currently active. 
so if we go into project settings, you go into quality, you can see here PC high is my current active one. And if I click it here, you'll see it pops up in the inspector window. I come down here, light probe system. We are just changing this to adaptive probe volumes and it's going to load a little bit. And then once everything loads, we should be ready to add adaptive probe volumes into this scene. So let's zoom out here. Oh, things are still loading. All right, so let's zoom out here and add an adaptive probe volume into our scene. So I am going to minimize this. You just right click, go over to light, and then we just add an adaptive probe volume. And that is almost done. We're almost done. That's how quick this is going to be. Now here we have a few options. I am going to go ahead and, and turn on my gizmo so we can see how big this is. And you can see it's not really encompassing the entire scene. It's just this little square here. But what I can do is hit this button, fit to scene, and it will actually space this out to be the entire size of the scene, which is really nice. So we can do that. We can also set it to global, and that's just a more in general. It will set it to the entire space here kind of like fit scene but the big difference between all these settings is essentially global you have less control it applies the same effects across the whole entire scene and then you have scene which allows you to be a little more custom you can customize just a little more there gives you a little more control and then you have local which is even more and more control over how you're going to apply all these light probes to specific areas now I'm gonna be lazy I'm just going to say global now if you see here it's actually a little upset set at me it is saying adaptive pro volumes aren't part of any kind of baking set and we can fix that by going over to our lighting settings now if you don't have your lighting window you just come over here you go to rendering and lighting and you should be able to pop it open there if we come in here we need to add this to our baking map now what's complaining about is the fact that we haven't baked a map while using this new adaptive pro volume and you can see in the lighting settings we can come over to this tab and there are things that we can fine tune sky occlusion you know what this is a video i want to do later that I'm not going to fit into this one where you can do sky occlusion and then be able to transition from day to night. Uh, looks very cool. But for now, I'm just going to hit generate lighting and that should throw our new adaptive probe volumes into the scene. So this is going to take a minute. Now that it's done baking, we can actually see a lot more and do a lot more with these light probes. If we go over to window, we go to analysis and then rendering debugger. We can go down to probe volumes and we can say display the cells and then display the bricks. We can also say display the probes and I'm going to go and head and exit out of this for now and let me explain what is going on here so as you can see this is the magic of the adaptive probe volume so we got a purple we have a kind of teal orange and then a dark blue when you have higher density of geometry here you'll see it is going to be purple and so all our light probes are going to be one meter apart because we are going to have way more transitions there's a lot more light changes here but as we get it further and further out from the scene you'll see that these boxes we are now only doing it every nine meters in the orange zoom out even more you zoom out even more and I don't see a dark blue but I am assuming this is essentially dark 27 meters between each light probe so let's zoom in here so before with the old light probe system we used to have to place every single one of these light probes and we probably wouldn't have placed this many but with this new light probe system it does it for us automatically and it fills in all of these spaces now, clearly this saves a ton of time not having to place all these light probes. I am going to come back over to analysis. I'm going to come back to the renderer debugger, and I am just going to turn off all these little displays here. And let's press play and see if it matches up. With the adaptive probe volumes back in the scene, you'll notice that the squares, the dynamic moving boxes, are now properly lighting with the indirect light as they move in and out of different forms of lighting. Our GPU frames have gotten a little better, sitting about 3.5, and then our frame rates are way more stable. You can see Adaptive Pro Volumes saves us time and also gives us very similar results to placing the light probes ourselves, but there is a bit of a cost with the GPU frames, and I'm going to chop that up to me just not optimizing the scene, tweaking all the specific things you can with the light probes. For a quick and dirty way of getting this done, this is fantastic. I'm sure if I optimized a little more, it would be even better, but Adaptive Probe Volumes are here. I hope you all found this useful and helpful. If you did, give me a like and subscribe if you love me. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.